Hello and welcome to the Car Kirana channel and welcome to something that makes my heart sad. People going to repair mechanics and they spend money and they try to get their car fixed and they're back to square one. And the worst part of that is when the original problem was never fixed and you go back to the shop that just fixed your car even though they didn't really fix it and they ask you to spend even more money. And most people look at that as like, are they trying to rip me off or do they even know what they're doing? Unfortunately, this 2010 Toyota Camry went through something similar to that. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what that is, what happened to this car and what the shop did and why is it now in our shop needing actually a lot of work. None of it has to do with what was actually done to this car. Let's get started. So this car has a check engine light and the other concern kind of bigger than a check engine light it has severe lack of power and at a certain speed it just won't accelerate anymore and to the customer's explanation right around 60 miles an hour it just it becomes so lacking in power that it won't go past that now i drove it sometimes it does that sometimes it doesn't check engine light is constant and that's what we're going to look at but before we do that this car was in a shop recently. Let's take a look under the hood. Usually when I see this car was just in a shop. It looks like nobody's ever been here in years and years. Nobody bothers to clean anything. Just at least wipe something down, check fluid, nothing. That's fine. Let's pull the engine cover, which is just sitting here. Not even clipped in. And would you look at that site? Brand new parts, aftermarket ones. I see the evidence of them. Somebody's been here. And this is usually the, what, what mechanics like to call the parts cannon. This is the identification of a parts cannon. Let's start, let's kind of go back to the beginning and diagnose this car. We have a check engine light. Let's grab our scan tool and let's go take a look. Okay, let's see what our scan tool is going to say. Let's connect to this car. So, this is Camry without smart key. This is a TMMK. TMMK is Toyota Motor Manufacturer in Kentucky. It's made in Kentucky. Let's connect to this car and see what kind of codes we have here. Kind of starting from the beginning all over again. Let's go to engine. So we have a bunch of codes. Try to put a screenshot of those codes so you can see them. So it looks like somebody's been doing some stuff some testing, whatever the case may be, because I have some permanent codes. Permanent codes, they will erase on their own as long as the problem doesn't reappear. So the first thing when I have multiple codes like that, we're gonna do something. I'm gonna try to erase them. Now that I know what these codes are, the main code we have that is current is P0013. I'm gonna erase these codes. Nothing. We have a hard current code. This is the first thing we're going to look at. We have a hard code. This is simple diagnosis. It's when you have intermittent problems is when we have really the difficult diagnosis. But when you have a hard code like that, you haven't even started the car and it's already set, this is an electrical code. Because when the engine is not running, how does it know the timing is not working or the timing components, the engine is not running? Right now, all the computer is doing, it's testing continuity basically it's making sure that it sees all these components all the various sensors and everything we have a hard code for camshaft position b actuator circuit open bank one this engine only has one bag let's go exploring a little bit so camshaft position b is actually exhaust a is intake b is exhaust let's go take a look at what we have here camshaft actuator is the VVTi gears themselves, they look like this, by the way. But what controls them electrically is the oil control valves. 
And this is where the parts canning comes in. Somebody looked at this code, even though it is hard code. What I mean by hard code is you don't need to run the engine. Oil control valves, when they're bad, you need to run the engine and drive it where the computer commands the oil control valve to do something and it's not doing it, then it will set the code. But when I haven't even started the engine and it sets the code, my problem is likely not component, unless this component is open circuit. But here's the best part. Now we've diagnosed this car already, but I'm gonna walk you through that process and how we arrived at the diagnosis. They not only replaced the exhaust one, which is this is the exhaust side, that's the intake. They actually replaced the other one, just for good measure. It's, very, it's gonna be very hard to see, but they did actually replace the intake one as well. But this is the parts cannon. Why do you replace the other one when it's per working perfectly fine? And the best part is, I, just from the markings on this part and how cheaply, horribly it looks, this is an aftermarket part. You put an aftermarket oil control valve on a Toyota, we have problems. Even if this fixed the car, you do not put an aftermarket oil control valve on an engine, period. Worse, take the perfectly working oil control valves, throw them to the garbage, put these, and not fix our problem. Our problem is very simple. Watch this. We have the scan tool, we have P0013. If I do this, just unplug this sensor that is for the exhaust, the, actual, the oil control valve, sorry, not the sensor. If I unplug it, if my problem was with this, now we should set a different code. But let's go take a look. Now everything is live. Key is on, scan tool is live. I have the same codes. Hmm, well, that's interesting, isn't it? Well, let's go do something else. Let's go see what should happen if you unplug this with your car live. I'm gonna unplug the intake one, which is right here, it's exactly the same. I'm gonna unplug that. Let's go see what happened now. I immediately set another code, P0010. That means the other side is good. So mistake number one with the parts cannon, why did you replace the other side if it's perfectly fine? Well, for good measure, right? Well, you're doing your good measure at the expense of your customers, possibly food on their table, which is the case here. People are on a budget. Then problem number two. Did you actually diagnose the car or did you get this car? This is how, unfortunately, there are probably a 50-50 split of mechanics. 50% of them, they'll get the car, they'll read the code. First component that is vaguely described in the code, oh, let's go replace that. That's the part cannon mechanic. Did you actually check? You didn't, the bottom line. And usually as a customer, you need to know that when the diagnosis came about in less than five minutes, sometimes we have a problem. Now, in some cases, the diagnosis will take five minutes, which it actually took 15 minutes here because it's, it's not difficult. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you exactly what we did. Step number one, I know there's something electrically wrong, but we're gonna take it one more step. I'm gonna activate the valve, oil control valves with the engine running. What happens with oil control valves is when you activate them full advance, it's gonna kill the engine or at least it's gonna run rough. Let's do that for intake and exhaust and see what happens. It's a little loud. We got the exhaust hooked up to the car. Let's start it. We're gonna go to active test. Very simple active test. You can activate the VVTI system. We're gonna go to VVTI system, ANK1. We're gonna activate the intake now. Well, we're, if everything is working right, this engine should stumble and potentially stall. Let's try it. That's a working VBTI system on the intake. Now let me reset this and we will test the exhaust side. Let's restart this engine.
still on. There we go. All right, we're back. You see how these engine is just not happy. It's not having it. It shouldn't be doing that. Now let's go to the exhaust. This is VVTI exhaust activation. When you activate it, you full advance, it should do exactly the same thing, possibly at a lesser scale, so this engine might stumble. But watch when I do that. Nothing. So, at this point, your OCV valve is potentially commanding things and nothing is happening. The VVTI system is completely disabled on the exhaust. Good. So, at some technicians at this point will turn on their parts cannon. That's okay. And they'll say, well, let's put an OCV valve. But my problem is your OCV valve is non-existent. Well, did you know that intake and exhaust on this particular engine are the same? So here's what we're gonna do. I already know if I unplug the intake one, we set a code. That means that circuit is alive and well. So let's do this. Since our circuit is alive and well, that means if we have an issue with this one, we don't have an is the same issue with that one. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna unplug the intake, and I'm gonna plug the exhaust one to the intake. Just the connector. We're not gonna start the engine, because that would be very bad. If this was the component that was bad, Right now, I should be reading good, because they're exactly the same part in this case. Let's go erase our codes. Well, now I have even more codes that over-retarded codes because we ran it. And it was basically trying to advance the timing, but it sees nothing. It's actually set that code. But my other code is still there. That's the key thing here. So basically at this point, we know for a fact, there's no problem with, with the oil control valve electrically because our problem is not mechanical. Our problem is electrical. So there is our diagnosis from here on out becomes super simple. We recently released a video on the series on electrical diagnosis. If you guys have been watching that, I highly encourage you to watch that because I really want to share with you guys how to diagnose these electrical systems. And right now, you're going to see a live demo of how that's done. Continuity, very simple. You just check this wire from here to there. We remember we talked in the series about high resistance, sometimes can be in the form of a weak connection, broken wire, corrosion, that is high resistance. So we're going to do something here very simple. Key is off. Let's reconnect our stuff the right way. And my problem is between here, potentially, and the engine computer. If we have a, one of these two wires that connect this oil control valve are broken, that's your problem. Basically, the computer is not seeing the oil control valve electrically. It's not seeing its resistance. It's not feeling it. It doesn't, it, it thinks it is like this unplugged. So here's what we're gonna do. Engine computers, at least in the more modern Toyotas, they will have two connectors, big one and small one. Small one is the body. These are the kind of the body functions of the engine, cooling fan, interior stuff, gauges, whatnot. The big one is the engine one. So this is the one that actually connects to all your sensors and all your engine wiring, if you would. This is the big one. So basically, all these sensors that you see here, 
your coils, your cam position sensors, your oil control valve, your NOx sensor, everything that is directly connected to the engine will end up here, or majority of it. Some of it might go to power, like if we were just powering a component, but all the sensor inputs and the important vital things that the computer controls or takes from, they end up here. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a very basic continuity test. Are these two wires that end up here, are they good or are they broken? If they're broken, we found our problem. If they're not, then we move to the next step. Okay, so we're gonna use our voltmeter here. We're gonna do a very basic continuity check. Now this is where learning how to read diagrams and figure out which pin out of these are it. I already know it's the sixth pin because we already looked at this car. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is one of them. We're gonna connect our voltmeter to it on one side. And we're gonna set our meter to resistance. Continuity on resistance checks will be zero. Remember, low resistance equals a bad problem. So first thing you wanna do is check your meter. Make sure your meter is reading correctly. When I touch the two leads, we have Point 0.1 ohms. That's the standard. So if I see point 0.1 ohms elsewhere or very close to, we have continuity. This wire is healthy. So now, now we're connected to one of the pins. There we go. I have point 0.1 ohms on one of the wires. Point 0.2, point 0.1. That's fine. That's continuity. We're good. Now I'm going to, just for testing is this is how you want to test it because if these are shorted together they could also be a problem test the other one I see nothing OL out of limits that means the resistance here is so high the meter can't register it which means there is no continuity now let's go check the other pin here's the other pin connected to it let's check our resistance here bring that meter so you can see that there we go 0.1 ohms check the other side nothing OL out of limits so what does that tell us that tells us only one thing wait I plugged in a known good part which is the other side. It's very simple. We just did that in front of you. You plugged in a known good working part to the wire and it's not picking it up as a component. The wires going from here to the computer are good. So what is left? This car needs a computer, folks. This is something surprising because Toyotas usually do not really go through compu engine computers at all. This one, however, is an exception. When I say they don't do that a lot, doesn't mean they never do that. There's only one thing left for us to check, and we already checked that. Check the pin fit. We tighten the pin connections in case there is a pin that came loose, but that is not the case here. And basically, if this customer that already spent, by the way, if I remember what they told me, six, $700 already into this car, if they would have had somebody just diagnose this car, spend a little bit of time, I mean, this video is not that long. We basically diagnosed this car and we already know what's wrong with it. If you would have just spent that time, that $700 would have went towards the computer, not stuff they don't need. This is the problem with the automotive industry. And this is how, this is an engine, we just diagnosed a bad computer here, folks. People scared of computers, scared of electronics. This was not rocket science. This was just common, kind of common sense, logical diagnosis, and it's very simple. This car needs an engine computer, and why is that? Because my wire is good, my component is good, the computer internally has an opening on those two pins. Now, why did that happen? This is where I draw the line, because I have concerns that at some point, something might have shorted 
And this is what we're going to do, kind of the next step here. We're going to make sure that I don't have shorts in these wires. So we're going to kind of reconnect our meter and we're going to do a different test just to be 100% sure because I've been in the automotive business long enough. It is the worst thing in the planet when you buy a very expensive component, you plug it in and it immediately fries up because you did not do your homework and you missed something and you just fried the new component. That is very bad. So let's do something else. We're going to go again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Plug it in here. Now I'm going to switch my voltmeter to volts DC. I want to check two things. Let's unplug this. I'm going to connect it to ground. Nothing. The meter is just hovering around. I'm going to connect it to power. Nothing. The meter is just hovering around. And that's what we want. This means this wire does not have a short to ground or short to power. Let's test the other one. Nothing here. Nothing here. Now we know for a fact we don't have a short to power, a short to ground. But let's do one more thing. I'm going to turn the key on in case some other component is doing this only with the key on. We're still connected to the one pin. I have nothing here. Nothing here. Let's connect to the other pin. Nothing here, nothing there. We're done at this point. That's it. This needs a computer. We know that for a fact. We've done our due diligence. It did not take a week, which this is what happened with this shop that diagnosed this car. They threw their pirate cannon the first time. Didn't work out. Customer went back, they kept the car for a week. Why would this diagnosis take a week is beyond me, but that's fine. You're trying to make it right, right? Then they came out with the conclusion, hey, you need an engine computer, it's gonna cost a small fortune. But now the customer doesn't trust them and I don't blame them, and this is the problem. Folks, diagnosis is so important and it, it's not complicated. You gotta spend time on diagnosis. I have people all the time call, texts and emails. I have this code. What is the problem? I don't know because we, it could be, in this case, it could be an oil control valve, it could be a mouse chewed on this wire and destroyed it, it could be this connector is corroded, it could be the computer. I don't know. We have to do the due diligence and diagnose it. This is, this is why codes, engine codes, when you have trouble codes, check engine lights on, they're not the computer telling you what to do and how to fix it. That code is telling you what the computer saw is wrong. In this case, I don't have electrical connectivity to my oil control valve. That's what the computer is saying. It doesn't know why, because the computer is not capable. This is not some super NASA computer. It just sees, I don't see my oil control valve with the key on. Set the code, we're done. That's all it says. Same thing with O2 sensors. Signal's too high, signal's too low. Heater is not responding. I'm commanding the heater on. After a certain amount of time, it's not getting to that temperature. I, that's, the, that's what I see, that the heater is not responding. They don't tell you what's wrong exactly, precisely. The computer does not tell you, go replace a part. But here's what DIY mechanics fall into this one, and unfortunately, professional mechanics sometimes do. The parts cannon. They read a code, mass airflow. Oh, let's go replace the mass airflow. I've seen this so many times on this engine. Here's what happens. You get a mass airflow code. People go replace the mass airflow because that's the parts cannon would do. And then they, they were so focused on the mass airflow that they missed that this little muffler loves to fall on this engine. This falls and you basically have an open here. 
and that's what sets the mass airflow code. I see this over and over and over in this industry, folks. You gotta spend most of your time in diagnosis, and if you don't know how something works, how are you gonna fix it? And if you don't understand how electronics work, how are you gonna fix them? I hope you learned something from this experience. We're gonna have to talk to this customer about this computer, and unfortunately, they are on a budget, so we'll see what options we have, which at this point, we don't really have a lot. At least the car is drivable. You know, they can drive it relatively around town, but not really higher speeds because it, it's basically working on half the VBTI capacity. This is not good. But folks, I hope this video is helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of our videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.